In today's video, I'm gonna be fixing Leeds United and saving them from relegation. I only happy at the end. Honestly, guys, I feel Leeds United are going down. I don't think they're surviving this battle. I know they've got the same points as Burnley, but Leeds play Brentford away from home and Burnley play Newcastle. My money's on Burnley. I am very happy. I don't know what's happened with Leeds. They were mostly a mid-table club on the Bielsa, but everything is just, yeah, it's not gone according to plan. And I guess that's where we come and we're gonna be fixing Leeds. Leeds United and just making them a stable Premier League club and of course trying to win the Premier League and the Champions League. I think this is going to be a really fun fixing challenge and if you guys are excited drop a like and also revealing my brand new career mode which begins tomorrow. It's going to be Everton. Get ready guys as tomorrow we're going to start an Everton career mode on the channel. It's going to be epic. They just about survived the relegation battle this time around. I think it's going to be a challenging career mode so see you guys then as well. All right, for now, back to Leeds United. Season one, this is what we're working with. I think the team is good in certain positions, but the midfield is a bit mere Calvin Phillips carry job uh, session right now. We do need a better can because I'm not too convinced with Rodrigo. Rafinha is literally the man in this team. And of course, in real life, he's linked with rumors to Barcelona and everything. Let's do one thing. If Barcelona ever come with an offer for Rafinha, let's keep it like a challenge to accept it no matter what. So... Keep an eye out for that. That could make or break this challenge. I like the team. Right back, centre mid, cam, all positions. I think we need major improvements. Good thing is, we got the Premier League TV money coming. We're still keeping Leeds United in the Premier League. Trying to just see if we can avoid relegation in this first season. 40 million. I think my plan is a right back and a centre mid with that money. I always feel like spending too much on a right back just never makes sense when you can get a young player and just use dynamic potential to get his overall up. That's what I'm thinking I'll do with Tino Livramento. Let's sign him from Southampton. Even got a team of the season card in real life. Think this is a smart signing to make. Okay, it is a bit risky for me to go into this without knowing much about Livramento in terms of what we should offer, but I'm gonna stick a 9 million offer to see what Southampton say. They want 11.9 million. Works for me. What if I put in Ailing in this deal and maybe chuck in about 6 million? That's close to what they're asking in terms of cash. Would that work? They don't want Luke ailing. I think we'll just have to sell him elsewhere. Um, let's counter with 10 million then for Livramento. What are they going to say? That works. Let's go. Not surprised, man. Livramento wants important squad role to kick things off. Five-year deal as well. No release loss. Works for me. And what do we offer in terms of wages? I think I think 40,000 per week. Is that, is that a bit too much? Let's do 30,000 and see what he says. Works. We've signed a new right back. And for a good price, you know. I know what you might be thinking. He's only 74 rated, but trust me, with a development plan, he's going to skyrocket in his overall. Luke Ayling, captain, leader, but for now, I think we're going to let him go. I need the money. Honestly, I don't mind having Calvin Phillips be our captain, so there you go, and let's put Leave Romento into the team. Look at that, guys. Ayling's been sold for a good chunk of money, and we're looking at a budget now of 35 million. That's good. Let's, let's just use all that money for a central midfielder. That's what I'm thinking right now is the play. Would I be able to steal Bruno Guimaraes away from Newcastle? That would be a pretty amazing transfer, but I just don't think we've got the financial juice to make this happen. But him and Calvin Phillips in the midfield. Oh boy, that is brilliant. But let's see. Let's try this out. I'm going to start with a £27 million offer. What are Newcastle going to say? It's possible. We can actually do this. We've got the juice. Come on. Um, Let's counter then with £33 million. That should do it, I think. Ah, oh, they still want a bit of extra cash, man. Let's bring it down to 35 then. £35 million for Bruno Guimaraes, who's now a central midfielder and not a CDM, and that works. Now, that's what I call a proper good signing, boys. We've really improved that midfield. Dallas can go to the bench, and of course, we can put in Mr. Bruno Guimaraes in there. I love that. I absolutely love that midfield now. Honestly, guys, that's probably how I've got my team set up for the first season. Livramento and Guimaraes coming in the rest of the team. We need players like Rafinha, Bamford, Harrison and all to carry. We've got players like James on the bench. I'm eager to see what we can do in this first season, but let's keep the objective simple. Let's aim for like a mid-table finish. I think it's capable. Fun fact, by the way, I was gonna actually do a Leeds United career mode starting from tomorrow, but then I saw Everton in the, in the way they managed to avoid relegation. I feel like the challenge of, you know, taking the fight to Liverpool would be a ton of fun. So that's why Everton career mode tomorrow, and today we're doing the fixing Leeds challenge. Okay, guys, we haven't been relegated. It's Norwich, Watford, and 
Brentford going down. Look at Everton in 17th. We're, we're, we're in the top 12. Make that top 11. Make that top 10. Oh my god, we finished 9th with a negative goal difference, but we'll take that. What a start to this Leeds United fixing challenge. Liverpool win the Premier League, by the way. Oh, the player growth has been insane. Look at Bruno Guimaraes. Why is he feeling out of position there? Let's fix that. There you go. Look at Calvin Phillips, Rafinha, and Livramento up to his 77. That back line has grown massively. Melier up to 81. We've built a great foundation. I think next season onwards, if we get the backing, we can take this team to the next level. Patrick Bamford's the man. 79 rated. 21 goals this season, 19 in the Premier League, fair enough. The board have given us about 70 million to spend in our second season. That's not too bad. In fact, that's actually perfect. I can make the improvements I want to make. I'm thinking we go for a quality cam. Probably improving our left back position could be on the cards too. Guys, I've just managed to sell a fair few players from the squad. Players like Rodrigo and all gone. Why? Because I wanted an insane amount of money to make a superstar signing. You guys might have heard about him, Paolo Dybala. He's on his way away from Juventus. He's going to be joining a new club on a free transfer. Could be any club. Why not make it Leeds United for this challenge? Would be amazing. But I don't think we can get him for free. It's going to be a nightmare trying to pull this off. I don't know if we even can because he's going to be that that expensive. But if we can sign Paolo Dybala, I would absolutely love it. Imagine him in that camp position. We're going to start 70 million offer. What's Juventus going to say? We're missing about 5 million from making this deal happen. Let's counter with 85 million. Good offer, I think. It's a solid counter offer. They want 92. I think we can pull this off. I really think we can pull this off. This is how we'd convert Leeds United into a top class club, you know. Uh, 89 million is what we're going to go for. And that works. We're just about to sign Paolo Dybala from Juventus. Yo, that's actually mad. How on earth have we pulled this off? Paolo Dybala at Leeds United. All right, let's actually convert him to a cam because that's where he's going to be playing for us. Only should take a couple of weeks. He's in his prime. It's gonna be epic. That's what I call solid progress, man. In season two, we finished sixth in the Premier League. Still far out from those Champions League spots. To be honest, only six points away. I think it's possible next season. Let's go. Paolo Dybala went up to an 89 overall. Look at our midfield. Our attack basically is insane. It's the back line next season. I think we need to invest a bit of time in. What are we saying about our top scorer? Dan James top scorer. That is a bit of a surprise. Bamford coming in with 18 goals. Dybala with a solid first season in the Premier League will take that. Rafinha kind of slowed down a bit. Season 3 and let's see the kind of budget we're looking at. About 60 million. So I'm a bit surprised we're getting less money than last season. I think it's because until we get Champions League we're not going to get the big, big budget to work with. I think it's obvious this season left back position is where I think we could really do with a bit of upgrades. So let's add another left back to the team. A potential starter over Firpo. That's the plan. Cucurella from Brighton would be perfect. I still can't believe Barcelona let this kid go for free. Like, honestly, insane. We're gonna sign him up here. It's probably gonna be our only signing for the season because that's all the money we've got. We're going for a very different approach in this uh, Leeds United video today because normally we go and sign a lot of youngsters, but this time it's more established players and I don't know in the long run if it's gonna help us out or not, but so far, you know, signing Dybala last season... I think was decent. Now we're signing Mark Cucurella this season. 56.2 million. Works for me. There you go, guys. Mark Cucurella signed. I am going to put him into the team over Firpo. Firpo is certainly going to be on that bench. So we've improved squad depth a fair bit. Team's looking nice. Maybe I should head into the free agent market because I wouldn't really mind getting a midfielder for a bit of squad depth. Let's see if anyone's available. Probably one of my favorite players in career mode, Billy Gilmore, available on a free transfer. Nah, man. This this is a no-brainer. That's the kind of squad depth we need. Let's sign him up for free. Wage demands are pretty decent. We're signing him up, guys, for free. Billy Gilmore at Leeds United. Done. I know he's going to be only 76 rated, but that's good squad depth we've got. Let's go. That's how the team's going to look like for this season. I don't know if we're in any European competition. We'll see. Let's get through this season. Surely this season, we should be making the Champions League because our team is 
more than good enough with players like Dybala, Cucurella coming in, Rafinha as well. We've got talent, man. I told you, man. Our team's good enough for top four, and that's exactly what we get. We finish above Manchester United. We've basically already saved leads from relegation. Brilliant. Did we win any of the cups this season? Nah, that goes to Man City, and this one goes to Leicester, but good progress. Were we in the Conference League? Sadly not, Um, or at least we didn't reach the final. No Europa League, Champions League, or any of that sort. But the growth was nice. Bamford, 83, he's managed to really do well with his overall. I love the back line, but I still feel a new centre-back or something will be needed at some point, but look at Paolo Dybala. 92 rated, I'm so glad we signed him. Bamford with a solid season, man. 32 goals, he's been unreal. I kind of want to try and win the Champions League with Patrick Bamford up top. It's going to be tough, but next season we will be in the Champions League. Rafinha's looking solid as well. Solid season. Paolo Dybala is the man. I kind of hope EA from next season start reducing your transfer budgets because giving you 176 million for getting into the Champions League is a bit mad. But hey, that's the Premier League TV money, the Champions League money, I guess. So for season four, ridiculous budget to work with. Our squad is very, very decent as well. Depth is there. Everything about it you want to love. And I think the improvements we need to make is very, very clear. We get center backs that are quality and we're sorted. You know what, guys? Let's stick to the theme of signing more established players. I think that's been working out really well for us. What if we do a madness and sign Ruben Diaz? He's going to be in his prime. I think if we sign him, it might eventually be the only signing we're able to make. But someone that's 91 rated, can you really go wrong with that? No, you can't. I think if we sign Ruben Diaz, instantly we're a Champions League contender. So let's make this happen. Can we put anyone in a swap deal? I doubt Manchester City care. Plus, we don't have much depth in the centre-back position. So let's do it. We're going to start with 110 as our first offer for Ruben Diaz. Straight up, they want 174. This is ridiculous. We're going to be spending all our money on a centre-back. I think that's the smart thing to do. I would want to like maybe bring in a better left winger, but we'll keep that for a potential next season. I want to sign players in their prime. I feel like it's a good strategy, something different. And Ruben Diaz is the man we're going for. 150 is the deal negotiated. All right, boys, still got to get the contract deal done. All right, let's go. Crucial squad role. Absolutely, that's bare minimum for a player like Ruben Diaz. A five-year deal. Willing to accept that as well. Let's go. These is wage demands. We'll remove the clean sheet bonus. Submit offer. And there you go. We've just signed Ruben Diaz. All right, let's put him into the team. I think he's going to get into the squad over Robin Koch. Because I feel like there's still a bit of growth potential for Stewart. Sure. Let's put Koch over here. Diego Lorente can go out for, let's say... Where's he gone? Where's he gone? Where's he gone? Ruben Diaz right there. You love to see that. Let's go. That's sorted. We're still left with about 25 million, you know, and I just noticed Harrison wants to leave the club and he's joining Burnley when the transfer window opens. When did that happen? We anyway will need to sign another left winger, guys. Yikes, man. Didn't realize. We didn't really get any money for Harrison leaving. That is bad. Yo, that is honestly awful, guys. Um, It's going to be difficult now signing a left winger. We're not going to sign a quality left winger. It's going to be only someone who's going to be a squad player. Let's see what we can do, boys. But that's kind of thrown a spanner into the works. I don't mind signing a player like Eden Hazard, you know. Call me crazy, but Eden Hazard on the bench, I think, will be far more valuable than any other player. Uh, we'll still have Dan James be the starter. Signing Hazard for a couple of seasons, I think, is smart. Gives us a bit of experience. Maybe a chance for him to revive his career at Leeds United. And for only 22 million, works for me. Oh, come on. Hazard feels our offer was too low. Oh, you're kidding? We offered him insane wages. Well, I'm then thinking a player like Insigne would be better. Like, honestly, should be 84 rated. Lorenzo Insigne is better, but he's going to be slightly more expensive. Hazard's decided to go for RB Leipzig, funnily enough. Fair enough. He's decided to join them. Um, Let's maybe try for Lorenzo Insigne, who's actually higher rated. Oh, but he's worth 29 million, man. That's an issue. We'll, we'll offer 25 because he's 33 and see what they say. We literally can't afford this. We, we can't. 30 million's my best offer. Nah, we can't afford him. Could Rebic be the man? He's about to win Serie A with, of course, AC Milan in real life. He's younger than everyone else. Could be a top-class player to have on the bench, you know. The goals he could bring in, potentially even be subbed on as a striker. I like the idea. 22 million works for him. There you go, our second signing of the summer. Rebic has been signed. Some very shrewd transfer business this time around. Because let's see what I'm going to do. I'm going to put Rebic over here. And that sorts our bench out, man. It is looking fantastic. The first 11's a bit insane. I've got 
high hopes now for this season. Look at Bamford. They're incredible we've managed to, you know, keep him and grow him to an 84. Not gonna lie, because we've signed a lot of players in their prime, like Dybala and Ruben Diaz, I think our best shot at winning the Champions League is probably this season and maybe the next one, because once these players start dipping in their overall, we're gonna have more problems. All right, guys, time to begin our run in the Champions League with Leeds. We managed to top our group of Atletico. Brilliant. Brand of 16, Borussia Dortmund. Our team is more than good enough man to do major major damage in the champions league let's see the first leg against dortmund they've got harland it's harland versus bamford what's gonna happen here it's a 2-1 win for leeds bamford could have scored another one but he scored a brace that's enough to give us a good advantage meanwhile they're also in the carabao cup final chance to win a trophy i wouldn't mind that at all against newcastle bang we win that as well let's go all right boys second leg against borussia dortmund i think i think we can do this come on now come on now let's just get maybe a draw or something no instead we've smashed them 3-0 let's go we're up against another german club in leipzig first leg against rb leipzig come on let's get the result we do let's go and the second leg now against rb leipzig can we get the job done we've got a 2-1 advantage and we increase it job done semi-finals i'm telling y'all this is our season our team's good just realize stewage is injured is that a bad one a broken tailbone for five months well good thing we've got depth in that position. Robin Koch is going to be in the starting 11 and we can put Cresswell in there on the bench. Okay, wow. We've literally gone through a Bundesliga, basically, getting to this final. Now we're up against Bayern Munich. I need a good first leg, man. They've got Antoine Griezmann. Wow, that's an interesting signing. Our team's good. Is it good enough? Looks like it is because we've got the result in the first leg. Okay, what have I just seen? Paolo Dybala departure. He's going to be joining Liverpool. I didn't realize his contract was expiring. Now, it's basically our only chance to win the Champions League because next season no Dybala oh my god second leg against Bayern Munich and on penalties we go through my god wow 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 that was close but we're in the Champions League final and this is our best chance to win it meanwhile we've got a cheeky FA Cup final don't mind winning that too because we won the Carabao Cup and we win the FA Cup too sadly though in the Premier League we didn't have the gas we had to focus on the Champions League and the Cups and we finished fourth that's fine in the Champions league but of course it's all about the champions league for us we're up against chelsea in this final yo the team's good we're lacking a bit of depth or a bit of strength in the back line i'd say with Koch and livramento being a bit man but the rest of the team is insane i want to see the stats who's been our top scorer this season patrick bamford what a player honestly paolo dybala with his best season no wonder liverpool have come in for him dan james did pretty well rafinha balled out let's go that midfield is unreal can't wait for this final man let's get into it all right guys i am ready but maybe this kit clash is, is not something I want to deal with. So let's maybe just go with our home kits for this one. We're up against Chelsea. What's their team looking like? El Nasseri Howards. The thing of five at the back. Oh, well. Well, let's do this. I think our team's got enough. All right. Champions League final against Chelsea. Ah, this is not going to be easy. I love the squad we've built. It's been kind of different to the usual fixing videos. We've not gone for mainly young players. We've gone for more established players like Paolo Dybala, you know, giving him a chance after what happened with him at, at Juventus. It was kind of sad seeing him cry at the end of his last Juve game, but already a chance for us. Bamford controls it on the volley. Bang! Oh my God! Patrick Bamford is a monster. What a strike from the Englishman as Leeds United make it 1-0 already. Bamford Oh my days, that was one hell of a strike. Dan James assisting him in the Champions League final. That was a strike and a half. The control and the finish, lovely. Couldn't have asked for a better start, boys. And let's let's keep this up. I think we're winning this easy. Yo, Dan James is a cheat code, man. That pace that he's got, li literally, he can just run past anyone. Cross is decent. Ah, good, good header away. Paolo Dybala, he's going to be so much fun to use in this challenge, man. Dybala on it. Oh, he literally floors and Golo Conte looks for that pass for Rafinha on the other side. And the duo running really nicely as it's a chance for Bamford and he scored another one. Yo, this man is insane. Right place at the right time. I can't lie, Rafinha and Dybala as a duo are so much fun. Oh, here we go. We're sending this one for Rafinha and look at how quick he is. Still Rafinha. Fake shot. Paolo Dybala strikes it off the crossbar. That would have been one hell of a goal, man. Yo, this Chelsea side looks awful. I don't know how they got into this final, but this has been one of the easiest starts I think I've ever had to a fixing video. Like, oh my God, has this been easy? Few moments later. He manages to get past him. The header's good. And what? 
has Melia just done? I was just saying how easy this game has been and we do that? Like, seriously. Yo, that's the laziest goalkeeper I've seen in a while. Uh, Melia, how on earth have you not managed to get to that? Like, he literally just stopped at this. You could have literally stretched your arm up, man. Like, look at this, guys. How stupid is this from Melia? Literally can't believe he didn't get to it. Oh, I don't like this, man. I don't like this. The momentum has shifted completely in this game. El Nasseri again with a chance. Difficult angle. Looks back inside for Loftus-Cheek. They've completely opened things up. That's good keeping there. Bamford. Oh, there's so much space there for Bruno Guimaraes. Controls it. Goes for goal. And he slotted it home. Against the runner play, we make it 3-1 right before halftime. Again, controversial. I think the ref should have blown for halftime. But we take it. Oh, Ben Chilwell. Ah, oh, that's a good ball. Back in. Dead it away. I don't want to give them an early goal in the second half. But that's what it's looking like right now. Mukoko. Ball inside. Bound. Early in the second half, Chelsea get a goal back. Okay, Rafinha is just so nice to use on this game. That's three players. He's just walked by, trying to make that four, but Saar read him there. Oh, that's a smart release for Dan James, and it could really cost Chelsea. Uh, Dan James has got the pace. He looks to square this one in. That was the worst cross I've ever seen. Dan James looking for Paolo Dybala. Challenging at the Chelsea defence and maybe deciding to go for goal himself. And that wasn't far off. Just a minute to hold on. And it's done. We've just won the Champions League with Leeds. And we've basically saved them from relegation while making them one of the best teams now in Europe. Let's go. Enjoy the celebrations, folks. Remember, tomorrow a new journey begins with Everton. Everton Kuremo tomorrow around about 12 p.m. UK time. Um, yup, so stay tuned for that. And yeah, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed it, drop a like, subscribe. I'll catch you all for the next one. Peace.